So the first bits with circle geometry. Now this idea we talked about before, but you will notice when it comes to uh, circle geometry questions in extension two, you're more likely to get those sort of questions where you know, show it is a cyclic quadrilateral, that, that sort of thing. So using the circle geometry theorems in reverse or, or the converse. And just as a reminder, things like this. A circle whose diameter is the hypotenuse of the right angle triangle. In other words, you got a right angle triangle, you know it's possible to draw a circle around all three points. AB would be the diameter because of angle in a semicircle. Actually, this next one was the situation that we had in the, the trial exam, where we were able to create a situation where from a, one particular interval, AB, we could show the angles in the, the same segment were the same. So we can say it was a cyclic quadrilateral. But basically, any of our theorems we could use in, in, in reverse. Four centres of a triangle may be useful, might not be useful, you might never use them, but here they are. The first one is the in circle. Now it's called the in circle because it allows you to inscribe a circle in, inside the triangle. So if you wanted to find the center, you get the three perpendicular bisectors, join them up. Well, in reality, you only need to draw two because as soon as you've got the point of intersection, that's going to have to be the center. The reason being, is because we know tangents from an external point creates the axis of symmetry with the center. So the sides of the triangle becomes three tangents to the circle. Then there's the circumcircle, where we find the circumcenter, which now is the circle, there we go, and we draw in perpendicular bisectors and the reason we can do that one is because we know the perpendicular from the center will always bisect a chord. Once again, we really only need two of them to locate the center, where the center would be of that circle. The medians also meet at a common point, and the common point's known as the centroid. There's not actually a circle that we, we draw with that point, but what it does do is we know it always cuts in the ratio no, two to one. And the fourth centre is what's called the ortho centre, and that's where the, uh, the perpendicular heights meet. The interesting thing is the last three will always lie in a straight line, which is known as Euler's line or Euler's line, however you say his name, but they will always be on the same line. Trig can be used in circle geometry. The connection is the sine rule. So A over sine A is B over sine B, C over sine C, the diameter of the circumcircle, not if circumcircle, the diameter of. So let me prove that for you. So there's the triangle, drawn the circumcircle. I've drawn another triangle, and I've labelled the point there P. But CP is a diameter. So I've specifically made that side go through the centre of the circle. Now we know angle A will equal angle P because they're both in the, the same segment. So therefore the sine of A must equal the sine of P. Now PBC, that's why I deliberately did it through the uh, centre, that's a right angle triangle. So BC over PC is the sine of P. Rearranging that, so PC is BC over sine P. But we said sine P was the same as sine A, and so therefore we get the diameter PC is equal to BC, or another way of saying that, little a, over sine A. And then by the sine rule, it flows through to the other ones, B over sine B, C over sine C. That's it. You may never use that, but you never know. We may come up with a question this year that, we're, that becomes useful. Let's have a look at some questions. These are really old one, 1990. So AB is fixed. P moves around the uh, circumference. And we know that AC and BD are always drawn in perpendicular to whatever those lines are. Okay. First one, show ABCD is a cyclic quad. All right, well, BDA 
BCA, they're both 90 degrees, they've told me that. So we've got a cyclic quad, because whether we say angles in a semicircle, uh, or we say angles in the same segment, they're the same, so we've, we've proven the condition. So I went with angles in the same segment are equal. Uh, and oh yes, the last part of that, so AB ends up being the diameter because of the angle in the semicircle. Okay, we're now going to show triangles PCD and APB are similar triangles. So APB and DPC, well, basically they're the same angle, common angles. PDC and PBA, PDC and PBA, well now that I know that that's a cyclic quad, I can use exterior angles of a cyclic quad. And so therefore I only need two angles to prove similarity. So I've got two angles. So equiangular or angle angle, however you want to write that one. So as P moves around our circumference, the length of CD will not change. So it doesn't matter where we put P, that length's going to be the same. So let's just prove that. I've just proven these two triangles are similar. So I'm just going to withdraw them sort of side by side so I can sort of relate to them. Now, so the ratio of CD to AP must be the same as PC to AP. Right, so there's our ratio of sides in similar triangles. Now in triangle PCA, so if we just look at that, PC over AP is actually the cosine of P. So it ends up being a right angle triangle. So therefore CD over AB is also the cosine of P. So CD, so the length of CD is equal to AB, and remember we said AB was a fixed length, times the cosine of P. Now it doesn't matter where we place P, because angles in the same segment will always be equal. So cosine P will be constant as well. So angle P is constant. So an AB, as I say, is fixed length. So yes, we know CD is of constant length. Find the locus of the midpoint of CD. Alright, so ABCD, remember we know is a we know it's a cyclic quadrilateral. We know AB is the diameter. I'm gonna let M be that midpoint of CD. So as that point P is moving around. That's C, the length CD. We know it's staying the same size, but it's also moving. It wants to know the midpoint M. What shape would that mark out if we did it? Okay, O would be the center of the circle of this cyclic quad. Now, the distance from O to M will be constant. Now, the reason I know that is, remember, CD is of constant length. So it doesn't matter where CD is, that chord in this cyclic quadrilateral is always the same length. And we know that equal chords are equidistant from the centre. So it doesn't matter where CD is, its distance to the centre of the circle must always be the same. So therefore M is always a fixed distance from O. What's the locus? We talk about a point, that's a fixed distance from another point, we get a circle. Now I might have got a little bit carried away, and I actually went and found the radius and all sorts of things of this, because it's fun. Yes it is. OM squared would be OC squared minus MC squared, and so we can sub in what we've already worked out. And so uh, there we go, there's a pretty simple radius, half AB sine P. Uh, so it's probably a bit more information than what they were looking for. They were probably just looking for the simple answer. Hey, it's a circle. 2008 paper. Interesting diagram. So, so P, Q and R are all on the circle. And we've got a secant QR, which uh, produced through intersects the tangent at T. Uh, bisector P, Q, R. So they've labelled them both theta to highlight it's a bisector. Now what do we got to do? First step, show that TSP and TPS are the same. So TSP 
and TPS. Okay, well I know RQP is equal to RPT. Now why do I know that? Well, that's my alternate segment theorem. TSP would be RQP plus SPQ. Exterior angle of a triangle. So TSP then is RPT, because we just said RQP is the same as RPT. And SPQ, they told us that was equal to theta. So SPT is also RPT plus theta, common angle, it's the same angle. So therefore, SPT and TSP are indeed the same size. Here was the interesting bit of the question. Hence show that 1 on A is equal to 1 on B plus 1 on C. Let's put the diagram back in. We're going to need that to work this one out. TPS, we now know is an isosceles triangle. So ST is also little c. I could name it that way. Okay. Square of the tangent is equal to the product of the intercept. So PT squared, M point of the chord to the point of intersection times N point of the chord to the point of intersection. So let's sub in that. PT is C squared. QT would be ST, which we just said was C, plus B. And RT would be ST, which we just said was C, minus A. Expanding out the right hand side, C squared's cancel, and it is now possible to rearrange this and get 1 over A is equal to 1 over B plus 1 over C. Look, I guess the best places for questions now is looking at past HSC papers. We're getting into that sort of mode. Uh, in the fake Cambridge, which I placed on the back, 10A's got some circle geometry questions. In Patel, it was 10C, and to this day there's some questions in there I still don't know how to do. Uh, <laughs> they've got some good questions in the Patel. <laughs>